In this practice today, we're going to focus on gentle work that's going to incorporate movements in the whole body. We'll have an emphasis on stretching the side body and really waking up the spine. So to start today, you might want to have a couple of blocks handy and a blanket, and I'll be showing you options to use those during our practice. So let's go ahead and start in standing. And we'll come into our standing mountain, standing with the feet, hips width apart and parallel to each other. And just taking a moment to get rooted through the feet, joining the palms together, bowing the head slightly, and just inwardly preparing yourself to bring your best attention to your practice today. And if you'd like, you can dedicate your practice to someone or set a specific intention. Maybe something that you've been thinking about for the New Year's. And go ahead and release your hands. And we'll take a little bit of warm up. So starting with the chin, bringing the chin down to the chest, stretching the back of the neck and then drawing the chin up towards the sky. Spin the palms forward and roll the inner shoulder blades together. And as you exhale again, lowering the chin to the chest, turn the palms back. And then inhaling, lift the chin and rotate the palms forward and the shoulders outward. One more time that way. Rolling the palms back, chin to chest. Inhaling, lifting the chin to the sky, rolling the palms forward, opening the chest. Then bringing the head back to neutral. Let's go ahead and circle the shoulders now. Bringing the shoulders up and back, down and forward. These circular motions, just starting to feel the body waking up as you move. And going the other way, circling up and forward, back and down. Kind of getting a little bit of a sense of the terrain here, what it feels like in those areas, shoulders, upper back. And then release. And then bringing the palms together, interlace the fingers, extend the elbows out. Inhale, bring the hands back to the chest and exhale, push out through the arms, straightening the elbows. Inhale, hands to chest. Exhale, extend the elbows. Let's do that a couple more times. Inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. Good, then release the hands and bring the backs of the wrists together as close as you can. So the fingers are dangling down. And then imagine that you had interlocking bracelets that you wanted to keep together and pivot around the back of the wrist so the fingers point up. And we'll just gently circle the wrists, letting a little bit of stretch come through the backs of the wrists and hands. And then let's go ahead and reverse direction. Shaking out the hands and the standing swinging twists. So here, there's some momentum used in the arms to carry you around. You're tapping the front shoulder. Back hand is lightly tapping the small of the back. And then the head follows the movement and the twist, so you end up looking at the back shoulder. And release. Go ahead and circle the hips now in a clockwise fashion. You can bend the knees slightly, 
And just finding ease in the movement, and fluidity, and then go ahead and reverse. One of the things that we want to cultivate in the practice is a sense of continuity. And sometimes it's better to do a little bit gently, regularly, than to do a lot irregularly. So you might have had a little hiatus from your practice. Go ahead and step the feet together now, bend the knees, and circle. Sometimes over the holidays, we indulge a little bit. We get away from our practice. So the challenge here really is to be steady with the practice and to visit, visit it regularly, even if it's only for 20 or 30 minutes. A 20 or 30 minute practice done daily for five or seven days is better than a very vigorous practice that's maybe only done every couple weeks. Let's go ahead and reverse the direction now. And if this is challenging for your knees, you want to keep your heels on the floor, feet on the floor, they can be smaller circles. If you have more capacity here, they can be larger circles. But again, we're not really pushing the envelope today. This is more about maybe working at 80% capacity. And then coming back to standing, Let's go ahead now and work with the spine. So taking a deep breath in. As you exhale, let your hands slide down your legs halfway and pause. Then take another breath in. And as you exhale, slide your hands the rest of the way down your legs and release your head. You can see that I'm bending my knees a little bit here. So I'm allowing my pelvis to tilt forward and my low back to lengthen. Then as you inhale, come back up, sliding your hands up your legs, coming back to standing. Let's try that again. Deep inhalation. Exhale, halfway forward, bending the knees slightly. Lengthening the back of the neck. Take another breath here. And then on the next exhalation, let your hands come all the way down to your ankles, releasing the head, letting the spine just spill out of the pelvis forward. Inhale, slowly roll up, vertebrae by vertebrae. So you're rounding the back, stretching each spinal segment as you come up. And then one more time that way, inhaling. Exhale, bend halfway forward with the knees bent, sliding the hands down. Take another breath. And exhale the rest of the way into Uttanasana, standing forward bend. We're keeping it gentle, so maybe the knees don't get straight. Let's go ahead now and catch a hold of the outer elbows. And now letting the weight of the arms draw you down and forward. The weight stays balanced evenly in the ball and the heel of the foot. That weight of the upper body, the head, the arms, helping encourage that forward fold. You might notice with your knees bent that your belly comes onto your front thighs. Sometimes that contact between the thigh and the belly can give a deeper release through the psoas, muscle deep in the groin and the front of the lower spine. And then once again, release the arms, bring the hands back to the feet and the shins rolling up slowly vertebrae by vertebrae. And then pausing again in our standing mountain. Feet together this time, palms facing forward, opening the chest. Inhale, reach out through the arms, palms face up. 
Take the arms all the way overhead, interlacing the fingers. Let the index finger extend towards the sky in what we call a steeple hand position. And as you exhale, side bend to your right. Feel the left side of the body opening. You're still hugging the midline with your inner legs. So there's a sense of gathering your energy to the middle, even as you bring parts of your body away from the center. And to come up, initiate a movement down through your left leg as you inhale, come up. And then as you exhale, let's go ahead and go over to the left, side bending. Okay, keep the navel moving slightly back, base of the spine, tailbone moving slightly down and forward. Inhale, come back to center. And as you exhale, release your arms. Join the hands. And come back to that intention that you began with. Now, go ahead and separate the feet. Inhale, bring the arms overhead, palms facing each other, lengthening up through the sides of the body. And as you exhale, turn the palms forward and forward fold. Again, you can have a slight bend in the knees. And then take the hands over to the right. Drop the head. Keep drawing the inner legs together. And as you come up, push down through that left foot and reach out with the arms out and up. And then exhale over to the left side and bring the hands to the outside of the left foot. Fingers pointing away, release the head. Inhale, pushing down through the feet, reaching out through the arms. Inhale, come up. Exhale, side bend to the right, lower the hands to the floor on the right. And then sweep around through midline to the left and inhale, come up. Let's try that again. Turning the waist to the right, releasing the hands, sweeping along the floor to the left, inhale, come up, and then going the other way. Side bend to the left. Touch the floor on the left. Sweep the hands around to the right. Inhale, come up. Exhale, turn the waist and fold to the left. Sweep the hands across midline. Inhale, come up. Exhale, part the hands, lower the arms, step the feet together and bring the hands to the heart and just take a moment to notice felt sense in the body just with those simple movements that we've done so far. And releasing the hands, let's go ahead now and step the feet wide, straddle forward bend. Inhale, bring the arms up. And as you exhale, let the hips go back, keeping the legs straight, and lightly place the hands either down onto the floor or onto two blocks. So you do have a sense that the low back is in a neutral position. I'm not folding, I'm not flexing, but I'm staying lengthened through the front and the back of my spine. And you're also welcome to be up a little bit higher on the blocks like this. Let's take a couple breaths here. Staying light on the hands, lift the chest and engage the legs. So less and less pressure is on the arms and the work is primarily coming from the legs. Let's take a couple breaths here. Exhaling in a long, fine stream through the nostrils. Inhaling slowly down to the belly. And exhaling again. Now take the toes and turn the toes off to the sides a little bit. So your toes are now pointing to the corners of your mat and draw your blocks maybe a little closer to you. So your hands are underneath your chest rather than out a little further forward. And then we're gonna bend the right knee and let your hips sink. 
So your right buttock drops down towards your right heel, and you're in effect coming into a side lunge. Shift across, keeping your hips low, and bend the left knee. Here I'm keeping both feet flat on the floor, and when my knee bends, it tracks right over the center of my foot. Not, it doesn't come in like this. It rolls out, and the knee bends right in line with the center of the foot. Let's go ahead and do that a couple times now. Shifting the hips to the right, sink and bend. Stay low, shift, bend the left knee, sink. Shift, bend the right knee, sink. Shift, bend the left knee, sink. So we're building the strength of the legs here and the capacity for the squat. Keep going with me, bending the right knee. Shift and sink without putting a whole lot of stress on the knees. So the knee bend is not deep, but it is demonstrable and it helps to increase that ability of the knees to bend when you've got a load on the muscles that cross over the knee. So we're both strengthening the knees and the ankles and gaining flexibility at the same time. Okay, now the next time that you shift to the right, pivot. You can turn your blocks in your hand, pivot your right foot out and drop your back knee onto the floor and then again sink your hips. And we're gonna come into a gentle sequence that moves from the low lunge here, lifting the head up, light on the hands. And as you exhale, fold in, straightening your knee and lowering your head. Inhale, bend the knee, lunging, sink the hips, look up. Light on the hands. So here we're getting some stretch through the hip flexors on that back leg. So as the front of the hip capsule and also the right buttock. Exhale, go back and fold in, dropping the head. Inhale, lunge, look up. Again, light on the hands. Exhale, hips go back, knee straightens. Let's go ahead and keep the foot flat on the floor for this variation. One more time, inhale forward, lunging, look up. And exhale, let the hips go back and fold, dropping the head towards the shin. The knee not, might not get completely straight. One more time, inhaling. And exhaling, fold. Inhale, lunge again, tuck the back toes under. Take the hands to the inside of the right foot, lift the back knee, and then we're gonna pivot. Right foot's gonna turn in, left foot's gonna turn out. And there we are, dropping the back knee, or in the lunge on the second side, sinking the hips. Exhale, fold. Hips go back, knee straightens. Inhale, lunge, look up. Exhale. Hips go back and fold. Inhale, hips come forward, head up, lunge. Good, let's go ahead and repeat that. Exhale, fold. Straightening the knee, then inhale, bending the knee, come forward. One more time like that. Exhale, back with the hips, fold in. Inhale, lunge, lift the head up. And then tuck the back toes under again, lift the back knee, pivot the left foot in, walk the hands back to center, Inhale, one breath, lengthen the spine, straight elbows, head up. And then as you exhale this time, we can go a little more deeply into the prasarita if that's appropriate for you. Catching a hold of the outer ankles and letting the crown of the head sink down into the space between the feet. All the while the legs are engaged, the shoulders lifting slightly. So the front body gets long, especially the chest region, back body stretching. And then there's a deep folding in. And then as you inhale, lift the spine up, bring the hands around to the right, 
turn the right foot out, and we're going to come from here into downward facing dog. So tuck the back toes under, lift the back knee up, and step back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, dog stretching out its front legs. So here are the limbs actively being used to lengthen the spine. The heels should be back far enough so that you're feeling like you maybe have to stretch just a little bit to get the heels down. Okay, you don't want the hands and feet to be super far apart. There should be a sense that you can continue to lift up through the outer corner of the hip and pelvis. So that's the apex of the shape here. Then as you inhale, bend the knees to the floor. Lift the buttocks, chest, and chin, look up. And as you exhale, flatten the toes around the spine and gently sit back, child's pose, drop the head. Again, inhale, come forward, straighten the arms. Lift the buttocks, chest, and chin, look up. Tuck the toes, exhale, round the spine. Inhale, lift the knees, and stretch back one more time into your dog pose. Keep the shoulders broad and the inner thighs, outer shins pressing back. One more time, inhale the knees to the floor. Lift the buttocks, chest and chin, look up. And then exhale, round the spine. And this time we're gonna flatten the toes and sit back in our child's pose, dropping the head. You can separate the knees here a little bit. You really feel like you have space to release the inner groins, elbows are bent. If you don't easily make it to the floor here, you can use a bolster underneath your trunk. And then inhale, coming forward and onto the belly for Shalabhasana, the locust pose. Stretch your arms back down by your sides palms facing down on the floor. As you inhale, lift the right leg, shoulders, chest, and head up. As you exhale, come halfway down. And on the next inhalation, lift all the way up again. And then as you exhale, come completely down and release. Inhale, left leg, chest, and head, keeping the pelvis rooted. Shoulders drawing down and towards the sky. Exhale, halfway down. Inhale, all the way back up. And exhale, release, all the way back down. Inhale, both legs up, chest and head. Pressing the palms down, lift the shoulders. Exhale, halfway down. Inhale, all the way back up. And exhale, release all the way back down and rest for a moment. Good, then from here we're gonna come on to our back. Rolling onto your back and drawing the knees into the chest. Apanasana, the wind relieving pose. You can clasp a hold of your palms or your wrists or your forearms or even your elbows here. And let's take a couple slow, deep breaths into the belly. And exhaling completely, hugging the knees gently in towards the chest. Letting the low back stretch, the muscles that we just engaged actively in the Shalabhasana, releasing now. And inhale, let the feet and hands come to the floor, separating the feet slightly and the arms out to the sides. We're just gonna gently drop the knees to the right. So the feet are about as wide apart as a sticky mat is wide. And we're gonna drop the knees towards the right 
And then inhale back to center and exhale, lower the knees towards the left. And you're going to feel that that right side of the pelvis comes off the floor. That's okay. Inhale back to center with the knees. Exhale, draw them to the right. And inhale back to center. And exhale the knees to the left. And then coming back to center again. And this time we're going to cross now the right ankle over the left thigh. Interlace the fingers behind the back of the head. Inhale, arch the back slightly. And as you exhale, bring the left elbow towards the right knee. Inhale, come down. Arching the back, elbows to the floor. Exhale, engage the navel, flattening the low back, and coming up and twisting. Inhale. Exhale, left elbow towards the right knee. Inhale, come down, arch the back, elbows to the floor. Last one. Exhale, engage the abdomen, come up and turn and twist. Inhale, back to center. And then we'll just come into the figure four stretch, bringing the leg up, left leg up, and we're going to reach through and catch a hold of the back of the thigh or the front of the left shin. Good, keeping the right foot engaged, inner ankle long. Let's just take a couple breaths here, feeling the deep stretch in the right buttock. Getting into the deep rotators, the piriformis, the gluteals as well. And then releasing here. And then we'll go ahead and open that leg and catch a hold of the outer foot with the right hand. And we're going to turn to the right. I'm going to move my battery pack a little here. I'm going to turn to the right. And you can let the left buttock come off the floor. Bring the right knee all the way down to the floor if you can. So you're holding on to the inner and outer foot. And you're pulling down through the shin. So the knee is coming towards the floor, even if that left buttock comes up. And let's take a couple breaths here. So going deeper into some of those attachments around the hip, the outer hip, and posterior hip. Let's take a couple breaths here. Softening. Allowing the opening to come without force. Remember today we're doing about 80% of our capacity, so we're not forcing anything. Developing our ability to stay in the shape in a calm, balanced, sustainable way. And release. Okay, let's go ahead and take the other side. And I'm just going to turn around here. And from here, again, we're going to start with the left leg in the figure four position. Right leg is on the ground. So I've crossed my left ankle over my right leg. Interlace the fingers behind the back of the head. Inhale, arching the back. Exhale, coming up and twisting. Right elbow towards the left knee. Inhale. Arch the back. Exhale, flatten the low back. Come up and turn. Inhale. Exhale. Engage and twist. Last one. Inhale, elbows to the floor, arch the back. Exhale, flatten the back, come up and turning, then release. Bring the right leg towards you, interlacing the fingers behind the back of the right thigh. Taking a few breaths here in the figure four stretch. See if you can soften your face. And if the backs of the shoulders are pulling away from the floor, let those release down gently. And then 
allow the right foot to come back to the floor and the left leg to open. So you've got about a 90 degree angle behind the back of the knee. And holding onto the foot, let the knee come towards the floor, gently. Using your arms to pull down through the foot into the shin. And your right buttock will come off the floor in the shape, that's okay, allowing that to happen. Right shoulder is gonna come away from the floor too. And inhale, releasing, coming back to center. One last time, drawing the knees gently into the chest. And then releasing the right foot and the left foot to the floor. Extending the legs out. Bringing the arms out from the sides of the trunk, about 60 degrees, palms face up. And taking whatever you need to be comfortable here, closing the eyes. And just feeling the whole body as one global map of sensation now in awareness. You're welcome to stay in your relaxation pose for a bit longer if you'd like. I want to thank you for joining me in the practice today. Namaste.